Joining us right now is Forbes Media Chairman Steve Forbes and legendary investor Foster Fries. Good to see you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So let's talk about that. Steve Mnuchin was obviously the head of campaign finance for Donald Trump during, during the campaign. Would he be a good pick for the Treasury Secretary? Steve, what's your take? Well, he's exhibited great versatility over his career. It's not just in finance. He's been in entertainment and, as well. So I think he's got uh, that kind of open mind that's going to be needed to make changes at the Federal Reserve and some other things. So uh, you want somebody who's not uh, a rigid ideologue going in that post because big changes have to come to open up our credit markets. Look, Foster, we know that Donald Trump's plans include lowering taxes, include rolling back regulations. What do you want to see in terms of the person in that job to execute this plan? Well, I think anybody has to bring back our country to unify both the left and the right. There's so many things we agree on. First, I ran into Van Jones, who wants to arm the Kurds, as an example, and ran into Geraldo Rivera. He wants to arm the Kurds. Everybody wants to arm the Kurds, but it's get blocked by the administration. So now this will be an opportunity for us to have an administration that will do that. And I think in the financial area, we need that same thing. There's just way too much divisiveness in our country. We have to come together. Yesterday, we had Jonathan Gruber on the program, uh, one of the architects of Obamacare. He made what I thought was a stunning statement. He said that there's no evidence that Obamacare uh, is the reason for job losses in business. What do you think about that? Well, it shows he's in the bubble world, which is why if President <laughs> Obama still talks about uh, prosperity being great. In the real world, people don't feel that. Their real standard of living is under pressure. Their wages are starting to go up, but costs are going even higher, especially in health care. Yeah. If that guy ever ran a real small business without government subsidies, he would find out that these regulations, you don't know what your cost of your labor is, you don't know uh, what's going to happen next year, which means you don't invest in that kind of environment of uncertainty. Yeah. So they're in la-la land. I mean, I was pretty calm throughout the whole interview, but when he said that, I thought it was so incredible because we speak with so well, many he, managers he, he, of businesses and that's all they say. It, 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 it's an insult. He's yeah. the one who said the American people are dumb, so right. we he said don't that have we, to tell we them. Right, we were stupid. Yeah. yeah, so we don't have to tell them the truth, we're deplorable and everything else. That's yeah. why they lost the election. Well, that's another thing he said actually well even though CEOs say that they might be lying I guess because he figures just lie you know that's what he did to the American people anyway it's a, the, another conversation let me ask you about one yeah did you well, want to I would just say if we could follow Steve Forbes advice over the years he's been a champion for more private sector involvement in the health care health savings accounts and uh, he's got the formula as well as his flat tax I've been a fan of Steve Forbes for so long and it's an honor to be on the same show with him. Yeah, it is, Steve, and, and, and I agree with that. You had the flat tax idea before anybody was talking about it. So are you liking what you're hearing from Trump or is he changing his tune when it comes to tax cuts for individuals versus tax cuts for corporations right now? Well, there are a lot of rumors floating yeah, around I know. and I think uh, politically they've got to do both. They've got to do business and personal at the same time or else they're going to get hit. Hey, business first, people second. Yeah, and, that, and that's what he charge. campaigned on. So he's yeah. not going to change it now, is and, he? And, I mean, and that would be. You, and, and you can put them together. Hmm. And uh, Democrats will be more supportive, I think, amazingly, of the business side, although they'll never admit it publicly. But you put them together. You put that together. There's no reason why, Maria, we can't have a comprehensive tax package ready to go January 20th, get it passed by spring. You do that, you're going to start to see investment flow again, plus repealing Obamacare. Huge. So you think people will start <clears throat> feeling the impact of lower taxes in 17? Well, as you know, markets anticipate yeah, the future. Yeah, that's true. Businesses anticipate the future. When they make an investment, it's not just for the next quarter. They're looking at two years, yeah. four years down the road. So if they see that the tax code's going to get more benign, on day one, I think Donald Trump's going to repeal a lot of those executive orders. So it's going to be new regulatory environment. Mm. People are going to say, let's start getting in. As a business guy, would you change your behavior? Would you put new money into investing, into R&D, into hiring people oh, absolutely. if your taxes absolutely. were lower and the regulatory right. environment? But, but I wish your Republicans would take the messaging a little more carefully. He says we want to cut taxes at 15%. What I would like them to say, let's take the 38 to 9 percent highest, third highest rate in the world and bring it more in line with the rest of the world. Russia 25, China 20, uh, the Eurozone 24 and a half. It sells a little bit better than just say we're going to cut corporate taxes if you say you're going to bring it in line with the rest of the world. So if, if I would uh, get a post from uh, Trump, I'd like to be involved with messaging, but I haven't been called yet. But if I do get called, I'm going to ask what's the salary and the health benefits. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying really just the way you communicate it is real important. Oh, yes, yeah, it's so sure. important. We, uh, and, and Donald Trump has not, 
I mean, he's now beginning to really understand a more a charitable way of communicating. And it's really amazing to see the progress he's made. Look, he'll uh, grow into the job, I suspect. He's yeah. never been a politician before. But he's been a leader. Yes. And uh, what's so nice is to see some of the people in his company. I would encourage your readers to look at Lynn Patton's video, P A T T O N, like General Patton. Okay. And she tells about the real Trump family. And I've spent time with Eric and Donald. These are beautiful people. My gosh, we're blessed to have the kind of leadership uh, with the whole family now being involved. I think that's why he also was elected, and people fell in love with his family. Let me ask you about Walmart. Again, at odds with employees, Steve. Uh, it's over this new phone app created by a labor organization. The app is called Work It. It is aimed at educating Walmart employees about workplace rights. However, there is concern over the chat function that allows current and former Walmart employees to answer submitted questions. So, Foster, does Walmart have good reason to discourage workers from using this app? Is this a problem? I don't know if that really gets more intrusive in terms of we ought to allow people to say what they want to say. But in, in Cody, we have this uh, greeter, and the management calls and Bill, you're the best greeter we've got. You're helpful, you're friendly, but we need to talk. You've been late a lot, and I see you have a military experience in your resume. You weren't late in the military. He said, I really was. So what they said? He said, well, they say, would you like some coffee, Admiral? <laughs> 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 well, it's hard to clamp down on this people chatting. Be a press secretary. That is funny. That is funny. What do you think about this app? Any any concern? No, uh, I think it's a, it's a PR black guy. Okay. Uh, you can just pass the word among the people. This is f full of junk. They want to hurt you, not help you. Yeah. And instead of looking like you're trying to go against the First Amendment. Well, you know what's interesting. And, and these agitators always know how to try to set you up. Don't fall into their traps, these PR traps. Mm. You know, what's interesting is, you know, uh, you worry about the unions and, and what's going on in terms of how they will um, influence employees. But at the same time, everybody thought the unions were for Hillary Clinton. The union guy and gal and the working guy and gal came out for Donald Trump. Uh, just as they did for Ronald Reagan yeah. 35 years ago. People want to move ahead. And one reason why Trump won is in the last two weeks of the campaign, he had to look like he was looking to the future, yeah. like tax cuts, like getting a better health care system, rather than just staying with the status quo. And she, status quo is another word for stagnation. And she was very much just in attack <clears throat> Trump mode, not really giving a vision. Real quick, do you think we could double economic growth? We just asked Craig oh, to speak there. Because how, about, how, how about tripling? What? <laughs> well, look, we've had two So we're at 2% now. We, we, you we, think we, we could get to 6% economic growth? To get back to average a couple of years? Yeah, we did it in the 80s. We've done it before. With this kind of stagnation, it's like going 30 miles an hour. We can get up to 60 to 90. Please won't mind. So you, th you, so you think 4% uh, is doable, what, in 18 sometime? or? You could do it next year. Next year, 17? Sure. Wow. Latter part of next year. You because get the, because you get of these the, tax cuts and rollbacks of regs. And, and, and regulations. You don't mm. get in a trade war, so we got to uh, be careful on that. Well, that would. But, 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 you know, with seven years of subpar growth, we should have seven years of uh, above average growth. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. <laughs>